to Joel Rosen. I am an Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I want to welcome you back to another edition of Your Adrenal Fix. Today I wanted to talk to you about brain fog and neurological problems like focus, concentration, memory, uh, vertigo, balance, uh, personality, feeling happy, not depressed, no anxiety, and just being clear-headed and focused and what that has to do with the adrenal glands. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is if a great reference is called Why Is It My Brain Working? Uh, a revolutionary understanding of brain decline and effective strategies to recover your brain health. Who doesn't need that? So things like coming out of the mall and knowing where your car is or remembering where your car keys are every morning or where your wallet is or you know being in the middle of a conversation and forgetting what you were going to say. These are big, big problems and if you're experiencing these right now, then potentially you are dealing with some neurodegenerative changes that you you want to halt in the tracks right now, but more importantly, you want to learn um, how you can do this naturally. So let's talk about that. So again, this is Why Isn't My Brain Working? It's by Dr. Karazian. Um, I first read this book. I've read this book about three times, gone to lectures on presentations on the material in this book, and I still find it fascinating because you can always learn something. I first read this book on my Kindle, and you can see how thick it is. It's, you know, it's over... 500 pages and I just kept going on and on and on and on. I was like, I can't believe how, how long this friggin' book is. It's just going on and on. It was very, very informative. It was like, I like to get to the end. and um, But then I got the book in paperback. I'm like, no wonder it took me so long. So anyways, let's talk about um, how we work with patients that have brain fog from a metabolic and a neurologic perspective. So what does that mean? Metabolically speaking, the best way that I define metabolism is you eat food and it gets converted to energy. That's the best way to describe that. So if you have brain fog, then chances are you have other physiological problems as well. Things like uh, energy, waking up in the morning, not, have, not having a bounding amount of energy, crashing by midday, maybe getting a little bit of a second wind and feeling a little bit of energetic in the night and then just not being able to fall asleep, not being able to lose weight, feeling cold all the time, forgetful, all the cognitive stuff that we talked about. Your body needs energy to function properly. And if you're not getting the proper energy to function, then obviously there's probably a metabolic problem. And so what that means is you are not converting food into energy very well. And what I explain to patients is think of this as an assembly line. And you need all the factory workers to make the end product of energy. And if you don't have all the factories, uh, all the factory workers making the end products of energy, you are not going to have enough energy to supply to your brain. We're going to explain that. So what are all the things metabolically that can happen? Some of the most common ones are blood sugar. Blood sugars, you've heard me talk about going too high, being above 100, going too low, being ab below 85 from a resting, fasting state, meaning it leads to the same place. And what it leads to is it leads to insulin resistance. And the insulin resistance is like having a locked door and not being able to get into the room. It's the same thing. You have blood sugar and you have sugar in the bloodstream and insulin is trying to get it out of the bloodstream into the cells, like the neurons of, of the brain and, and the nervous system. And if you're not able to get the sugar out of the bloodstream then and into the cells, you're going to have fatigue and brain fog and focus and concentration and weight gain and, and uh, cholesterol and all that stuff. Another problem we see quite often is gastrointestinal problems from absorption to digestion to assimilation um, to utilization. Typically, we're going to have things like leaky gut. We also have food sensitivities. And these food sensitivities could be to things like eggs, very, very rarely, but we see it, gluten, dairy, soy, corn, rice, potato, a lot of these things are very, very inflammatory, and that's going to create a drain on your adrenal glands. 
And your adrenals are what settle inflammation, stabilize blood sugar, um, also give you energy throughout the day. And you know what? Your what regulates your circadian rhythm or your adrenal glands is a part in your temporal lobe, which is responsible for memory. So if you have shot memory, then you can be pretty rest assured that adrenal function is contributing as a cause and effect. The other thing that we're going to see, obviously, is some thyroid problems, and then also female or male hormones because they all get released from the hypothalamus and pituitary and if you break those feedbacks and they're not effectively firing then your libido your restorative generation uh, all those things are gonna are gonna fall up the wayside other things we see are liver detoxification kidney gallbladder dysfunction we also see pH, electrolyte imbalances. Um, so these are a lot of the things that can go wrong and you're not just going to take a pill and address all those things. You have to actually identify those things and functional medicine will do that. So when I see patients that have adrenal gland problems, more often than not they have blood sugar problems, they have insulin resistance, they have leaky gut, food sensitivities, adrenal glands. Things I didn't even mention are anemia and methylation. Those are really, really important too, and we're learning nowadays that those go hand in hand. So if you're not absorbing your B vitamins, or you are not able to break down folic acid into folate because you're getting a crappy source of B vitamins, um, then you are not going to be able to use those uh, substrates to make cellular energy, and you're going to fatigue. So how does all of this relate to your neurological problems? Well, what I'll tell patients is... 30% of the total energy that you use or you make goes to your brain. So if you're not getting energy produced from the food that you're eating, then you're not going to get the 30% of that energy to go to the brain. And that's going to affect you in five different ways. Sensory. So having pain, fibromyalgia, headaches spasms, stuff like that, feeling things that you shouldn't feel. Your nervous system is responsible for telling you what's going on, but it shouldn't be doing that 24-7. It's hypersensitive and it's fast to fire. The other thing could be motor. So we can have vestibular problems. You can have balance problems. You could have weakness. You could have atrophy or fasciculations or not being steady on your feet. Um, cognitive decline that's the main thing we're talking about your brain needs fuel for the neurons to fire and it needs oxygen and glucose and and repetitive stimulation so if we're not getting the proper fuel you can have depression anxiety irritability insomnia focus concentration all of these things are going to cause problems and what are we doing we're just taking pills to try to fix that and it's not going to happen Autonomic nervous system. So these are things that we don't have to think about that happen automatically while you're watching this video. So detoxifying, eliminating, processing foods, um, also respiratory function, cardiovascular function, blood pressure, all of these things you don't have to think about. If you're not getting the proper energy to these to the nervous system, they're not going to function optimally. And that's going to cause a negative spiraling because if you're not absorbing and digesting, you're not producing energy. If you're not producing energy, you're not digesting. And so it's a negative cycle. And that's a huge, huge problem. And then lastly, we have postural changes. Your brain needs proper fuel for it to keep the body erect and, and a nice posture. And, and so we see a lot of people that have sciatica or stenosis or degenerative disc disease or carpal tunnel. And when they have these things, a lot of the times it's because metabolically they're not, uh, they're not creating enough fuel from the foods that they're eating. So hopefully we gave you a little bit of a different way to think about um, your brain fog and how it relates to your metabolic system and it's not just a matter of taking adaptogens or taking DHEA or or cleaning the gut it's all of these things you need to identify what your main metabolic issues are and then what your neurological issues are and this book has a lot of questionnaires in here that you can circle and whatever you have ones twos or threes in a particular category that may imply a frontal lobe problem or a temporal lobe pro problem or a, a parietal lobe or or a cerebellar problem and those are muscles of the brain basically and you can rehab those areas by doing specific functional neurological exercises that doesn't require 
again, medication. So hopefully we gave you a little bit of information today. A light bulb went off literally and metaphorically um, showing you that your metabolic problem, your adrenal problem, your inflammation, your, your absorption issues are creating lack of fuel to your brain and that's resulting in focus, concentration, depression, anxiety, irritability, and you really need to connect the dots. So um, I hope you enjoyed this edition of your Adrenal Fix. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. Be sure to give me a thumb Thumbs up, a share, a like, a comment, and check out my blog at adrenalfatiguesociety.com. And I look forward to helping you in your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.